You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own plasma speaker. In the last episode, titled How to Transfer Energy Wirelessly, we talked a little bit about the principles of induction. And so if you haven't yet, go watch that to know a little bit more about what we're doing here. Also, in a previous episode, we built this frequency generator. So go watch that for a step-to-step -step tutorial on how to build this. However, I did make a few changes, mainly this capacitor here. So here's the circuit for this frequency generator. You can go ahead and go watch how to build it, or you can just follow this circuit. So last time we learned about how an alternating magnetic field produces a current inside of a coil. And that by using a frequency generator like this, we can convert a DC into a pseudo-AC current. For this project, I have this flyback transformer that I desoldered out of an old CRT TV. As you can tell, I have two wires soldered on down here. These are the first two pins. And this is going to be the primary coil to that I refer to in the circuit. Also, inside of each TV is one of these MOSFET transistors. As far as I'm aware, most TV only has one of these big ones and a bunch of small MOSFETs. You're going to want this big one because it can handle a lot more current. And you're going to need to know the pinout for your MOSFET. So to do that, just go ahead and Google the part number listed on it and click on a data sheet link to see which pin is the base, the collector, and the emitter. In my case, however, it goes base, collector, emitter. All right, so let's go ahead and prototype out the circuit we'll be using. First, I'm going to go ahead and insert this MOSFET into these three pins here. A transistor works as an electronic switch. Basically, when current is allowed to flow from the base to the emitter, it allows current to flow from the connector to the emitter. So you can use it as sort of like an amplifier. So with that, I'm going to take this positive wire of my frequency generator and connect it right up here to the base of the transistor. And I'm also going to go ahead and take the ground from my frequency generator and connect it over here to the emitter. Now let's go ahead and take one end of the primary coil of the flyback transformer and let's connect it right over here to the collector of the transistor. The other wire connected to the other side of the primary coil of the flyback transformer is going to be connected up to our voltage positive. Now we want to take the negative of the power supply we're using to drive this flyback transformer and we're going to connect it over here to the emitter of the transistor. Now go ahead and take the frequency generator and connect that up to about 2 to 3 volts DC. Now in my case, I'm using two separate power supplies to power this at anywhere from 12 to 36 volts DC and because this is being powered from that 2 to 3 volts DC. However, if you want to power them off of the same power supply, you can go ahead and use a circuit like this using a voltage divider so that it would make sure to supply this with the big voltage and this with the small voltage. Alright, so now with this all in place, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and bring this high voltage wire down here and see which pin it arcs to. The pin that it arcs to, I'm going to go ahead and put this alligator clip so I don't forget because that pin's going to be the other end of our high voltage coil. Let's go ahead and crank up the current and see if it'll arc to anything. And as you can see, we're getting a nice arc. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and take this auxiliary cord that's plugged into my phone. And I'm going to plug it into the port I have on my frequency generator. So now, assuming that everything is correct, we should be able to hear the music through the arc as I play music on my phone. It's probably a good idea, however, to not use something to provide the music that you actually care about, because there may be a high voltage spike coming back from this. You could be safe, but that may happen. Alright, so as you could hear, we were getting music to play through it. To get rid of that high-pitched frequency sound, you're going to have to carefully adjust the potentiometer here until you get the least amount of that high-pitched sound in the background as possible. You may also be able to eliminate it by making this capacitance a little bit lower on the frequency generator. I'm not sure, but that should make the overall frequency higher, and if you can get it something that you can't hear, then it won't bother you. Also, it's important to note that this MOSFET is pretty warm right now, so you're going to want to go ahead and put a heat sink on that, and if need be, also a fan. Now if you take a ring magnet like this, I got this one out of a magnetron from a microwave. Now watch as I turn on the high voltage and put it in between this. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is solder all of this together and I'm going to make it a little bit more permanent of a project. Okay, so here's my final version of the project. I have all the components inside of this lunch tin. And as you can see, I have it made so that I can play through the plasma speaker, or I can take it off if I just want to be drawing arcs. So let's go ahead and flip it on to show you that it's working. So now you know how to build your very own plasma speaker, and hopefully you learned something new. This will be a pretty cool project to show to your friends. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see our weekly videos such as this one, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Remember, high voltage is dangerous. So with that in mind, be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to wirelessly transmit electricity.